When you think of healing, you usually think of something that someone is going to be doing to you, for you, adding things. Um, I've had a long journey when it comes to physical healing. And initially I was taking supplements and trying to do this and to do that. And the fact is I wasn't getting better. And at some point I just got sick and tired of the variety and number of supplements I was taking. So I wanted to stop and I discovered something incredible that a big part of any healing journey starts with the release phase. When I stopped trying to pile things on, but I started looking at what in my life was affecting my health negatively, things shifted for me immediately. So if there are things that are affecting your health negatively, in my case, it happened to be certain foods like dairy, eggs at the time, um, wheat. Um, they just really gave my body chronic pain. My body was reacting to them. And so I took all of these foods out, number one, and then working with an expert, I was then able to introduce foods that will support my body in healing now that it wasn't being triggered practically on a daily basis. Because if you're giving it all the supplements and all the foods, but you're still giving it what it considers to be poisonous, then you can imagine that it's still always tense. And so a big part of releasing is also creating a space where you're reducing the tension and the stress. Because tension and stress cause dis-ease, lack of ease. And a healthy body, mind, emotional state, life is one where the stress and the tension are not chronic, where for the majority of the time you are at ease. And that is so important. And why is it important to be at ease? And this brings me to my next angle or method of releasing. You may have heard of this incredible psychiatric doctor who comes from Hawaii, who was able to heal a whole ward of very ill, mentally ill patients, not by talking to them in years of therapy, but by going inside of himself and cleaning. And this method of cleaning is based on the understanding that there is no one in the world but you. You are fully responsible for everything that shows up in your presence. And so if someone does something which is disagreeable, disappointing, annoying, irritable, whatever it may be, instead of going to try and teach them a lesson or tell them how bad they have been or trying to help them see um, how they can behave better, you go back in and you say, ooh, what inside of me has triggered or projected or caused this to appear in my presence? And so he has shared with the world now a beautiful, powerful technique called O'Opono Pono. Now, this is a technique I've known for years, but very recently has become so clear for me as not only an incredible forgiveness tool for self and others, but also an incredible healing tool. So the first sentence in Ho'oponopono is none other than, I love you. Love is a powerful, powerful state, emotion, feeling, whatever you want to call it. It is healing in itself. And to love a person, you get to open up. And in that I love you, where it becomes even more special is you're directing this love to the almighty, to the creator. And is love not one of the most connected feelings, emotions, or states? So in that conscious choice to feel and to declare love to the creator, 
that in itself is a beautiful connection to the light. The second phase of Ho'oponopono is I am sorry. I'm sorry for what, you may ask. I'm sorry for whatever is in me that is causing this to appear in my life, that is maintaining the situation in my life or in my presence. And I'm just going to be really honest with you. I've been practicing this over the last few days and I was so surprised every time I went through the, those phrases and I said, I am sorry after saying I love you. I just felt my body relax more and more and more and more. And I wondered why would my body relax when I'm saying I am sorry? But if you think about it, when you admit that you are sorry, when you are not resisting by, oh, it's not my fault, or, you know, it's somebody, you're not in blame of somebody else, when you're basically saying, okay, it's not something that I want to, you know, maintain in my life. I accept responsibility for this. The acceptance is re relaxing because you are no longer in resistance. And then you go on to say, please forgive me. Please forgive me for maintaining the situation, for causing the situation, for the, whatever is whatever is in me that is feeding this situation. And to say, please forgive me, comes from a beautiful space of humility, of accepting responsibility, of not coming from shame. Because if you are stuck in shame, it's very difficult to ask for forgiveness. Because nobody wants to be wrong. And shame is about feeling that you are wrong, as opposed to you did something wrong. And then now you're asking for forgiveness. And then the last is thank you. Thank you because you already feel forgiven. You feel gratitude that forgiveness has been granted. And I invite you to try this. Try this on somebody in your life that you have a difficult relationship with who shows up maybe in a very antagonistic manner. Try this on somebody in your life who may be ill you'd really love to pray for. And this is very important what I'm going to say now. It is not that there is something wrong with the person, whether it's illness or antagonism or irritation or whatever it may be. You're stepping into taking on full responsibility for what you are seeing and experiencing. You step away from shame, you step away from blame, you step away from guilt, you can see it, you accept it, and you are admitting that indeed you have something to do with this. And so that is why it is in your presence. And when you are speaking to your creator, what more healing state can there be? Because he is love, he is light. And if that connection is constant and the humility of what you know that you have maybe brought to the table, maybe unconsciously, then imagine what is happening. And as you relax, as you open up to love, as you open up to light, as you let go, guess what? Your cells are becoming lighter. Your cells are becoming brighter. Your cells are letting go of the old cluggy, heavy, painful energy. Now they have space to be filled with goodness. And there is the healing. Your frequency shifts. You go to a higher level of operating. And so the things that will show up in your life must be different. It is the law. Because you will see what you are. And I'm not saying this to make anybody feel bad. I had to come to terms with this because I definitely see a lot of things. I'm like, okay, 
if this is the situation today, where do I want to go? And if this is the way to go there, I am open to this. So we start with, I love you. I am sorry for my part in this situation. Please forgive me for the part I have played, for the pain I have inflicted, for the unconscious manner in which I have lived. Thank you. And say that over and over and over again, always being at the center, always knowing that you are responsible. This is not you for anyone else. This is you cleaning it up within you so it no longer manifests outside of you. And I'd love to know what happens. It is powerful. It is miraculous. And of course it is because it is based on love. And the other way that we can release, and this is the last one I'm going to be sharing in this video, is by decluttering our space and doing so using a very special technique called the Marie Kondo Spark Joy. We have all kinds of things in our spaces. And the other day I started a Marie Kondo festival, which basically means that you're decluttering your whole house and it's done in phases. And I've done a few categories. I've done my clothes, shoes. I've done miscellaneous items. I've done my books. And I just hadn't done my study. And I'd left it in turmoil. It was sort of in this transition phase for a while. And I asked myself, what's going on here? And I realized that, ooh, you see, your old identity fights to be kept alive. So my conscious mind was, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to clear space. I'm going to improve my environment. And a part of me was resisting that by maintaining the status quo. And so I said, okay, I'm done. The study gets to be decluttered. I called the person. Fortunately, she was, she was available because I really wanted to do it. I think it was on a weekend. And once I decluttered my study, one, put everything in the space I wanted it, I could look at my desk and it was beautiful and clear as opposed to just cluttered with all kinds of papers. What I noticed was just incredible. The next day, I found myself treating myself with such gentleness, with such regard and respect. Like, what would you like? What do you really want? And I thought, oh, this is very nice. And so, of course, creating that space and paying attention to everything and choosing only what you find beautiful, what gives you joy, and arranging everything as if it were for a queen, a visitor that you had high regard for, is telling you that, ooh, you are worthy of a space that is beautiful. You are worthy of things that bring you joy. You are worthy of a space that has no clutter at all. Every single thing is to be celebrated. You no longer tolerate anything that is suboptimal, subbeauty. You don't believe in just, oh, we'll just manage it. No. Does it spark joy? Yes, we keep. Does it not spark joy? Thank you very much for what the role you've played in my life, and I really release you. This is the power of release. So we can release when it comes to our bodies. Fasting is a great way to do so, for example, eliminating certain foods which may be triggering you at a physical level. Each person is very unique. We are all bio-individuals. Another way of releasing is through the powerful method of Ho'oponopono, where you open up to give love, you express that you are sorry, accepting responsibility, you ask for forgiveness and you give gratitude that it has been granted. That's releasing this old identity, releasing the things within you which are not in your highest and best. And the third way that I mentioned today is none other than decluttering your space releasing the old. And with those items that are no longer in your space, 
you are also releasing all the negative energy that goes with them. These actions are powerful. Your subconscious mind is watching you. What do you keep? What do you release? And so my invitation is truly to go and practice the power of letting go of old things, old places, old relationships that are no longer working. It doesn't mean that the person, you have to release the person, but you can change that relationship, that dynamic, right? And very, very importantly, old identities. Because when you shift your identity, you shift your destiny. So what are the identities that get to be released so you can heal and so you can step in to the destiny that you truly desire? I'd love to hear what resonated for you. Share this with as many friends, loved ones as possible. And if you liked what I said today, my invitation is to subscribe because there's more of this coming. Love and light.